Final Fantasy is bringing back one of its most controversial features, the open world with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. This is something that I was absolutely shocked to find out that they were going to be bringing back with this game. As with Final Fantasy XV, it wasn't the most well-received feature, because of which everyone thought they were going to be going with more open zones, similar to that of Final Fantasy XII or Dragon Quest XI, rather than an actual big seamless world especially for the Final Fantasy VII Remake Trilogy, which is going to be three full games. I figured they wouldn't want to make two whole open world games back to back. But assuming that the third game in the series is also going to be open world, that's exactly what they're doing. This is a huge undertaking, and one that has me impressed considering that this team, Creative Business Unit 1, has never made an open world game before. And today, we'll be discussing if this is a good decision. So you're going to want to hit that subscribe button for all things Final Fantasy VII Rebirth to come as we push the channel toward 94k subscribers. So please don't miss out on becoming part of the community. Now the first Final Fantasy game to be truly open world in the way we define it now was Final Fantasy XV. FF15 had a ton of issues throughout development, but one thing is for sure it was a very ambitious game, and at the core of all of its ambitions was its open world. Now in many Anyways, FF15's open world was pretty cool. You got to drive a car around it, fly a car around it, and many moments that truly felt like you were going on a road trip with your bros. In the first few hours that you experience it, everything seems pretty awesome. However, as time goes along, there are certain flaws that begin to creep in. For starters, because you drive around the world, there are many times that the world feels very empty and purely there for there to be enough road for you to drive on. As a result, rather than actively exploring this open world, you kind of just drive past most of it. And not that there is a whole lot in it, as one of the biggest criticisms is that it was empty and lacking immersion. You couldn't have too much stuff in every corner of the world because then you would just drive past it. But if you did have stuff in every corner, then you'd be getting out of the car all the time. In fact, you wouldn't even want to use the car because you'd be missing everything. You would just want to be on foot. This is not to say that cars can't be in open world games. I mean, look at games like Cyber Punk. But I think that in this style of open world, the fantasy game that doesn't take place in a single city, it doesn't really work. Another criticism was that there simply weren't enough towns in the game like notable towns. Yes, you'll find little gas stations here and there, and many of which are exactly copy and pasted. But in terms of big notable locations like Lestalem or Altitia, there was literally just Lestalem and Altitia. Then after chapter 9, the game would sort of just abandon the open world structure. Sure, you could time travel and travel back to the open world at any point in time you wanted to, which would allow you to finish exploring and do side quests, the rest of the game would be locked into a linear path which would take freedom away from players rather than giving them more. This is sort of the opposite design philosophy of previous Final Fantasy games, where as you went through the story, it would actually escalate in freedom. This would usually culminate in you getting the airship, allowing you to explore areas that you couldn't before, and explore the entire world at lightning speed. The design here kind of took the fun and freedom away as you went through the story. The reactions to this open world were pretty harsh, and there was a large sentiment in the community that many people just didn't want to see the series return to open world after that. Even myself, I kind of thought that it would be better if they just focused on creating large zones and good interconnected areas that could offer a real sense of freedom without them getting too in over their head. But then, I saw Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and its open world looks incredibly impressive so far. But will it meet the same fate as Final Fantasy XV? Listen, I I can't tell you whether or not this is going to be a good open world or not. Of course, it's impossible to say whether anything is going to be good or not before it releases, and that's exactly the point here. However, I do think it's quite possible that it will avoid the pitfalls that Final Fantasy XV had. All of which is to say, if the open world does end up lackluster in some way, it'll be for entirely different reasons than that of XV, I imagine. For starters, I think one of the 
big and more interesting things with Rebirth is the variety of vehicles. Of course, you have the buggy from the original FF7, as well as chocobos, but you also have a variety of different chocobos that you can use to traverse the world. What's more, you're able to capture those chocobos, in a way that kind of reminds me of catching a horse in Breath of the Wild. It's a great system to implement here in this game, and I think it gives us more ways to interact with the world and its inhabitants than just combat. In terms of locations, there's going to be a lot more to visit than just Lestalem and Altitia. In fact, there are so many places to visit here that it's actually pretty overwhelming how much content Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is supposed to have. Final Fantasy VII had a lot of towns. Many were very impressive and cool looking, and they were all extremely distinct in their look and vibe, which means that reutilizing assets in the way that Final Fantasy XV did is not an option. Now, there were definitely a couple of mini games in FF15, such as Fishing, but Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is going to take this to another level. There are all types of mini games spread throughout the world, including a brand new card game, Queen's Blood, as well as many returning mini games, many of which can be played or replayed at the Gold Saucer. This is to say that even in the footage that we have of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth so far, there is a ton of different ways to interact with the world. And I think this is something crucial that a lot of modern Final Fantasy has kind of missed. The world will oftentimes be just a background. It's not something that you interact with or do anything in other than, you know, walk up to enemies and fight them. Or maybe you'll observe a chest somewhere off in the corner. But the worlds don't really feel living. One of the things that I think modern RPGs do to immerse you is not just about what you're doing while you're in combat. In fact, a lot of the times, it's about what you're doing outside of combat, the exploration, finding little discoveries throughout the world, solving little puzzles, doing mini games, and other things to keep the player engaged. This is where people have issue with the whole walk forward fight cutscene. It's also why the linear versus open world debate plagues Final Fantasy more so than any other game. It's not that there aren't other linear RPGs, it's that they give you a ton of different things to do and options, choices to make along the way that keep you entertained while you're going down this path, which then still give the player tons of ways in which they're interacting with the game. This is what I think being a role-playing game, an RPG, is all about. It's about all the different ways that a player can interact with the game, outside of just combat. And oftentimes, whenever Square Enix does talk about modernizing these titles, they aren't looking at that. They're just looking at action combat and seeing that, but not seeing the other ways in which modern RPGs are offering true immersion. Now, one of the biggest questions with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is going to be how good the side quests are. The first Final Fantasy VII Remake game didn't particularly do too well with side quests. Midgar is such a rich setting and it really felt like the first game just did not do enough with Midgar as a setting in creating really immersive well told stories. Now that being said, Final Fantasy XV really also didn't do side content that well either and Final Fantasy XVI also had a lot of criticism for its side content as well. All of this is to say that there really isn't a good reference within the Final Fantasy series to say, hey, this is the absolute peak way to do side content in a modern video game. If they do want inspiration for this, it's probably something they'll have to look outside of the series for. And I'm really hoping this is the first major Final Fantasy game to absolutely nail its side content and create side stories that are actually immersive, expand the world, and are also really exciting and unique from a gameplay perspective. And also a plethora of content to do, make the crafting system feel actually worth it. As I'm exploring and collecting things, I want to feel these upgrades create things that are actually substantial. It's always funny to me when people talk about open world in terms of the size, but I don't think size really determines the liveliness of an open world or how good it is. Ultimately, it's the content and the gameplay loop that really make the open world shine and elevate it. And hopefully Rebirth has all of that and more. Shout out to Patron1 Ardindo and the rest of the Ultima community.